Hi. Today I thought I would introduce the discipline of biomedical and health linguistics and do so by remarking upon how proud we seem to be sometimes in biomedicine and health of our evidence-based approach to matters. Well, really, linguistics is no different. It is a very scientific endeavor with very rigorous methodologies. So today I think I'd like to introduce some of the methodologies that are brought to bear in studying the really fundamental matter of the vocabulary or the lexicon of our discipline or subdiscipline. So let's do that. For this exercise, we're going to take a collection of RCTs, randomized controlled trials, published in the big five medical journals. So Annals of Internal Medicine, British Medical Journal, Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, and the New England Journal of Medicine. And this is what a typical article looks like. All the words in the article, including some navigational words such as introduction, methods, etc. And those we'll want to actually delete before we do our analysis. Okay, we've chosen our articles. Now let's ask this program, Wordsmith Tools, to list all of the words in that collection and tell us how frequently they occur. This can be a painfully long process in real time, but we've sped it up a bit here. And now we get to see the final list of all the words in this collection. There they are, and you see the number sign represents every occurrence of any number within the corpus, and that makes up almost 7.5%. But then look at the other common words. The makes up, well, almost 5.5% of all of the words in the collection followed by of and etc. So we see a half a dozen words actually make up about 15% of the word count of this collection. It's not until we get down to, uh, well, number 12 patients that we begin to see some words which have special meaning in medicine. Well, all of that's grand, but now we need something to compare that specialized corpus to. We want to see how it compares to general English. So what we're going to do is to analyze a collection from the New York Times, because newspapers talk about a lot of different things, and so uh, their language tends to be representative of general English. Let's have a go. This is a corpus of about three million words, so it's going to take a bit of time to work through. Again, we'll speed it up and let's see what we get at the end of the day. Well, not so many numbers, but again, the makes up about, well, five and a half, almost six percent of general English. All right, now let's run a statistical comparison between the general English corpus and our biomedical corpus. And here's what we get. Numbers obviously occur statistically more often. In scientific articles, we expect to see words like patients and treatment occurring more commonly. And indeed, only about 400 instances in general English versus 12,500 in our medical corpus. And using log likelihood, which is sort of the linguistic version of a chi-square, we see that the probability of these two collections being the same is, well, vanishingly small. That wasn't unexpected. Uh, but let's take a look at, uh, well, a word which is commonly found in general English, group. 8,000 instances in our medical corpus versus about 1,500 in general English. For linguists, this is a clue that this common English word is used differently in the medical literature. And so what we want to do is use the concordance function of our software to see exactly how group appears in the medical literature. So again, we'll search our medical corpus. We'll look specifically for the word group. And all of the sentences in which it occurs. 
if we see commonly occurring patterns, uh, for example, aspirin group, then we can examine individual sentences and look for the meaning of that particular phrase and how it's used in the language. Okay, that's pretty electrifying stuff, and right now you're probably regretting not devoting your life to linguistics. Uh, but the point is that when linguists tell you something about biomedical and health language, they're not making things up. Uh, their conclusions are based on very rigorous methodologies. And we'll take a look at some others which are a bit more colorful shortly. Thanks very much.